hello and welcome to the last day of our holiday. Um, beautiful British weather as always. However, we are on our way to Renatus. Renatus is the company who is building uh, the new organ. We're going to go and have a look at uh, some examples of existing consoles that they've currently built, uh, some keyboards, some pedal boards, and just to meet the people to see the sort of the craftsmanship that they um, that they're able to achieve in the workshop. So I'm going to navigate through this beautiful wind and rain, and I will see you in the organ workshop very shortly. So after driving for about three hours through that horrendous rain and wind, we eventually arrived at Renatus to meet with Colin Peacock and to have a look around. We started our tour by looking at this shed and this is where all organs uh, start their lives. They actually are brought to Renatus like this and then are brought through into the workshop to be cut into shape using these wondrous machines. The machine you can see in the background is called a computer aided machine, a CAM, and going on inputs by a human it can cut out wood to a very very high degree of accuracy. Colin is there pointing to keyboard mounts which this machine has cut out. Not our keyboard mounts but some relatively similar to what we'll be having. Once all of the workmen had gone to lunch, we were then brought into this room, and this is where all of the magic happens. This is where all the finesse and finishing happens. The very skilled uh, joiners and craftsmen put their finishing touches to these works of art. That's a UHT keyboard there on the left, and the one in the middle right there is a Fatar uh, keyboard rack. We are having, as you know, a UHT keyboard on our organ. In fact, we're having four of them. Um, these ones here are also UHT, but they're slightly shorter than the ones we are having. They do feel fantastic. And we will be talking to Colin very shortly about why they feel fantastic and what makes them uh, the best in the business. This is an example of the different types of finish that are available in these UHT keyboards. Don't they just look astonishingly good? You know, the better the keyboard, the better we as organists play. They are really inspiring uh, and really encourage a better level of concentration, which then in turn results in a better performance. These are very exciting. These are the stops. We're going to have 130 of these. I was very particular about the way they felt. As you can see, it goes in very smoothly and pulls out equally smoothly. There's no big jolt or clip. And that's uh, thanks to some magnets at the bottom end, some opposing magnets which create that pressure. And you organists amongst you who've played some wonderful organs will know what I mean when a stop feels just right when you pull it out and push it in. This is um, an example of a console that Renatus um, are making. This is a, well, as you can see, it's an almost finished console. This is um, the, the shell, three manual, um, UHT, and it's, just looks uh, utterly fantastic. This is the sort of thing that we're going to have in um, in our house. And in fact, actually, um, our organ, believe it or not, has more stops than this. I find that hard to believe, but um, we have counted and the organ that's going to appear on our channel is going to be slightly higher um, with more stops than this. And, and similarly, um, with the adjustable desk as well for those for those evenings when it's um, slightly dark and my eyes are getting a bit tired and I want to have the that trio snarter a bit nearer to the to the old to the old face. This organ is actually slightly wider than the organ we're getting. The stop jams on the York Minster console are straight but here you'll see that they actually angle inwards from the center there's a curve to them. This actually means that the stops on the very far left the swell and the stops on the far right, the grate, are further away from the organist. I want them as close as possible. 
on the organ bench you can see four different colours of wood. We're going for the one on the right. It took my eye straight away. It's darker than this console, but it matches the organ of York Minster. It has a really dark and warm and rich feel about it. Just a place where I want to be sitting. Just like to introduce Colin, and Colin is the owner of Renatus. Um, very, very grateful indeed for uh, for your time and for showing us around this wonderful workshop. Um, Colin is actually just going to quickly uh, give me give us an overview as to why these UHT keyboards are the best in the business. Colin's already explained some of this to me, and it's rather scientific. So I think Colin would be. <laughs> far better uh, position to explain how these keyboards work. So, Colin, why do we have such long springs here? What? Okay, so the, the spring at the back of the key is giving us the pressure of the key as the key moves down. Now, the reason why we have a long spring is because it means that the amount of extension of the spring as we push the key is extremely small. So the key, the, the, the spring is changing length as we push the key down, but by, by very, very little. That means that the pressure required to push the key down through its stroke is consistent all the way down. Mm. Um, the pressure, however, is also adjusted by the pressure point. Uh, the pressure point is also sometimes known as tracker touch. It's the simulation of a tracker uh, mechanical action organ which has a, t a resistance at the top of the key okay mm. the, mecha the pressure point is created by opposing magnets in here so these magnets pass each other they're opposing magnets and they pass each other as the key goes down and the pressure point is set um, so that you get that toggle at the top of the touch as the, as the two magnets pass now we can make adjustments to the pressure point by adjusting the position of the magnets here, moving them backwards and forwards and up and down, allows us mm. to change the nature of that pressure point at the top. If we were to take the pressure point of, at the top of the touch away altogether though, the, uh, the rest of the pressure required to push the key is set by the spring. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. Is there another magnet underneath? There is another magnet. Should we have a look underneath? underneath? Should we have a look underneath? Yeah. So underneath the keyboard, as well as the adjustments for the pressure point, this is the contact system. So the contact system uses Hall effect sensors. These little look like little microchips, but they're actually sensors. And the the, uh, the black piece above is a magnet. Yeah. As the magnet passes the two the the Hall effect sensor, um, there's no physical contact, but the sensor is able to see the position of the magnet, and therefore we can set the uh, the contact point. The, the sensor contains two, or this little device contains two sensors, which allows us to measure the time difference between the two sensors as the magnet passes, and we can use that to determine how hard the key was pressed. So we can, we can actually read velocity from the keys, as well as just um, the, the, the fact that the key has been pressed. Mm. Mm. If, I, if I put these, um, if Colin will trust me to move these keyboards, if I put them back this way, and you'll have to take my word for this, but they feel absolutely like nothing else. They feel, um, well, they feel authentic and uh, like a real organ should feel. And there are two um, things which make it feel uh, so real. It's the actual touch itself, so the materials used, and as Colin has just been talking about, the, the pressure and the weight of these keyboards um, sets them, I think, uh, head and shoulders above any other keyboard that I've played in a very, very long time. Colin, what material are we, uh, are we using on these keys? Well, the, the material on the top of the key is a synthetic material which is, uh, has, has a, a look and a feel not unlike ivory, I mean, obviously mm. it's not ivory, yeah. um, but we, we want the material that's in use to have a, a natural feel about it. So it's not like a, a plastic that you would get on, a, uh, on most sure. inexpensive keyboards. Mm. Um, 
it's a German material which they, mm. they refer to as mineral, but we it's a it's a state secret. I'm not allowed to know that actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the, the black notes on here are made from ebony. Mm. Um, and they do feel wonderful, they're smooth, they're straight. Um, and also it's worth pointing out, I don't know whether you can capture it on the camera. If you can write down here and see how level all of the keys are from the top to the bottom, it's almost like an entire straight line. Um, that's very, very special and unique to these, to these particular keys. Yeah, we should have consistency both in that line running down and also if you were to look straight down over the keys, you should mm. have consistent gaps between the keys. And the, the nature of the keyboards means, and the, the adjustability of them, means that we can determine that those things are set um, correctly. Yeah. Um, we're not reliant upon plastic mouldings. No. These are engineered to be, uh, to be able to be set up correctly yeah. so that they look right and they feel right. But also so that they're adjustable, so that the, if, if you want a keyboard that isn't as heavy, mm. then that's fine, we can, yep. we can do that. I think that's what the, the, the crucial things, that was a good conclusion there by uh, Colin. They look right, they feel right, and they're adjustable. Um, some people like heavy, I mean, these are actually on the heavier side um, of, of, of organ keys at the minute, but as Colin has said, they are completely adjustable. The pressure points are adjustable, um, which actually we might, for our organ, have them slightly lighter than this, um, but that's the wonderful thing. They are completely adjustable. Colin, thank you very much for explaining that in a far better way than I would have ever have done. Um, I really appreciate your time. So there you have it. That was a quick whistle-stop tour of the workshop of Renatus. In future videos, we will talk about the pedal board, the dimensions of the organ, the stops, the font on the stop heads. We will go into great detail. We will be finalizing the design and doing all of this very detailed work and I will bring you on the whole journey with me. So until next time I will say a very excited cheerio. Goodbye. <laughs>